Hi, I'm Bob, uh, head referee for the Gulf Coast Robotics League. And I'm Sid, for head referee for the Space Coast League. We're here today to talk to you about the new game for this year. We're going to talk about some of the common rules and some of the more interesting aspects of the game today so you get a little better idea after having seen the game animation. First, we're going to talk about how the setup of the field is going to look like. This will be how the field's going to be set up when you come to the field with your robot with the wobble goals where they're at and the rings where they're at on the starter stack and the ones that you're going to preload are going to be back here behind the wall facing the audience. Then in this time, Sid's going to show you how you can set your robot up in a legal configuration. The robot's going to be placed in the start line. That means that some part of the robot has to be in the start line. And touching the back, back wall, it may possess, may possess up to three rings. The wobble goal has to touch the robot or possesses completely. After everything is set up and the legal configurations have been confirmed by the referees, we'll do a randomization do that. And what that'll do is two different things. First will be the stack here. We'll either have zero, one, or four, depending on what it is. And then that will correspond to the target zones. Zero corresponds to A, one corresponds to B, and four corresponds to C, which is where you're going to try to place the wobble goals during autonomous. You'd like to get that score. Then any rings that if they're not stacked here in the starter stack or not preloaded robots will be put into the low part of the goal. They do not score uh, any points. The hero player is going to pick up the stack that just came through after randomization and place it on the floor. Ready for this match. There are four tasks that you can accomplish in autonomous. First one is to score rings into the tower goal. Second is to take the wobble goal and put it into one of the target zones. The other one is to hit the power shot goals. And the other one is to park upon the launch line to do that. First task you can do is score rings into the tower goals. There's the high, medium, and low goal. The low goal can be scored anywhere on the field. The medium and the high have to be, or what has to be completely in the launch zone. Please note that the colors are different, that the high and the low are for the red alliance and the middle is for the blue. It's opposite on the other side. So pay attention to where you're going to do that. Um, if you're not in the launch zone, you will concur a penalty for scoring. You'll score the ring, but you'll get a penalty for being not in the launch zone when you do that. One of the other tasks is to be able to knock down the power shot targets like this. I remind you that you have to be in the launch zone to do that because again, you will score the power shot target scoring event, but you'll get a penalty for not being in the launch zone. One of the other autonomous tasks is delivery of the wobble goal into the target zones. Depending upon where the starter stack is after randomization, you're going to put in target zone A, B, or C. The wobble goal has to be completely in, meaning it's got to be within the boundary of the outer part of the tape to count for this achievement. Something like this would be considered not completely in and therefore not scored, as would a situation like this. In addition to scoring points during time on the wobble goal, there are two other uh, benefits. One is, is that a wobble goal inside the target zone is protected from interference from the opposing alliance during the driver control period. And it also has the wobble goal being starting in a legal position to be eligible for the wobble goal delivery into the drop zone task during end game. One of the other tasks is to be able for the robot itself to navigate to be in the launch line to do that. Again, it just has to be in, it does not have to be touching, just has to break the plane of the launch line to count. Another point is to remember is that the rings that are on the starter stack can also be used to score into the tower goal or to shoot the power shot targets. However, they will be subjected to the possession rules of having no more than three rings possessed by a robot at any time. Oh, that's illegal. That's illegal. Yeah. Also, the human player cannot introduce any of the rings back into the field until the start of the driver control period. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the uniqueness of the autonomous period, things you shouldn't be able to do uh, or you'll get penalized. One is you cannot interfere with the opposing alliance's starter stack. Do that. You also cannot interfere with the other team's scoring during autonomous as well. Uh, other thing is, is when you preload the goal rings, you can't put them on the wobble goal to do that. That's only in end game can you put those on. We're now transitioning from the autonomous to the driver control period when the human player is allowed to reset, expected to reset the power shot targets and return the rings to the playing field as quickly as practical.
The focus of the climate control period is to uh, score in the tower goal, uh, the low, mid, and high. Um, robots can drive up to the, the tower goal to score in the low, but have to be in the loading zone, uh, launch zone, to score in the mid and high. The robots uh, that are scoring in the low goal by the tower goal have to be mindful of goaltending and cannot block rings that are launched about 18 inches. Then as we transition into the end game period of the driver control period, in addition to being able to score rings into the tower goal as we did during the driver control, there's three end game achievements. First is to be able to shoot the power shot targets like we did during autonomous. Second is to put rings onto the wobble goals. And then if a wobble goal is not in the launch zone or in a target zone, it can be then delivered over the wall facing the audience into the drop zone and score points that way. One of the things to note that's unique for this year is each of the elements is scored in a slightly different manner. There's some that are scored as they happen, some that are scored at the end of the period, the end of the sound, or some of them are when the elements come to rest. Hey Bob, um, I generally spend lots of hours reading through the manuals, going through the forum posts, just trying to understand how the game is set up. How do we score? Do you have any recommendations now that uh, we are not going to be in the field and the teams have to do this remotely? Well, I think they're going to kind of do the things I do, which is read through the rules, uh, see how they're different from last year, mark those, uh, read them again, understand which rules apply to which game period, make sure if there's restrictions on locations of a field element or scoring element at the time or your robot, and just continue to do that. Obviously, monitor the forums on a regular basis and see that because they get updated regularly. And if you do have a question, go ahead and post it to the forum because once it gets answered, then everybody in the game will be able to know how to play the game more efficiently and hopefully with more fun. So say that was a brief overview of the rules and uh, penalties that are gonna be new for this year. Uh, however, you're gonna need to read the game manuals and do that as those official rulings. And then once the forum posts are starting, you'll need to read those as those will then become the official uh, rulings and objectives of how the game's gonna be played this year. Yes, absolutely. This season is going to be very different from all the previous seasons because it's uh, remote and we hope to see you in a question box uh, sometime in the future.